What's up everybody, this is GamerSci. So today is the 15th of November 2016 and apparently it is 15 years to the day since the release of the original Microsoft Xbox. Now back during that, that generation I was a bit of a fan of the original Xbox. It was my go-to system for most usual games, most common games. Uh, I tended to run with the Xbox for your commercial stuff and then I had a Nintendo GameCube for Nintendo Oddness. It wasn't my original system on that generation, I went with the PS2 right from the gate. I had that pre-ordered um, and then eventually I got rid of the PS2 and I got the Xbox once I've seen it running on my mate Darren's place. Um, I ended up trading him some stuff to get the Xbox off him and for the rest of that generation that was my go-to system. Now the Xbox for its time was an absolute juggernaut of a system. Um, it's different to today. Back then the Xbox was doing things that a PC at the time couldn't do. As much as an Xbox was basically a PC in a box and was one of the first systems to do that, it was massively powered for 2001. So much so that you put it on now, uh, if you enable the HD settings on it, which can be done even if you are in the UK, it looks absolutely fantastic even on a UK TV, even on a UK HD TV. You lucky Americans got HD right from the start. It still looks great and at the time I think that glossed over a lot of the reasons why I thought it was great. I was kind of a whore for graphical power. Now the reason I'm getting to this is I was looking on Facebook before and the official Xbox page had a thing saying list your top 10 favourite Xbox games. I thought great, easy, love the Xbox, I can list 10 great Xbox games. And you know what, it was a little bit more difficult than I thought. Now I did come up with 10 great games and obviously there is more than 10 great games but I was surprised just how difficult it was to actually come up with the 10. I could give you 10 GameCube or 10 PS2 straight off the top of my head but 10 great Xbox games, especially if you're talking exclusives, was a little bit more difficult. So what I thought I'd do, I'd give you my 10 greatest Xbox games. They're not all exclusive, although maybe the Xbox has the definitive edition of them. Um, and I have only chosen one game from each series. But have a think of it yourself, let me know. It's not that easy to pick 10 great Xbox games. Anyway, here's mine. Alright, these aren't in strict order, but they're in a kind of order. Number 10, I've got Jaeger. I don't know if you've played Jaeger. I don't hear a lot of people talking about it. It's a flight sim, spaceship sim, except it's all in atmosphere. It plays a lot like Star Wars Starfighter, if you've played that. It's got a really good story. It's got some nice graphics. Um, it was exclusive to the Xbox, and you can pick it up for like a quid. It's very good. It's very nice. I would recommend you pick it up. So number 10, Jaeger. Number 9, there had to be one somewhere, you can't do a top 10 Xbox list without mentioning Halo. So I'm going to go with Halo 2. I did love the first one very much, it was one of my first introductions to the Xbox. I just think Halo 2 did it better, it was more grandiose. I loved at the time the dual wield thing. Uh, Halo 2 is very cinematic, um, the, the part where you're trying to jump on top of the giant beetle thing, but whose name escapes me. Sure, you all know. Anyway, Halo 2, fantastic game. Again, it's not going to break the bank. I'm sure you've played it anyway, and if you haven't, it's been re released various times. Halo 2, my number 9. Number 8 was one of the more spectacular games on the original Xbox. Number 8, I picked Steel Battalion. Now, Steel Battalion is infamous, obviously, for its massive controller. And it is great fun to use. I don't remember any game up until the advent of VR that really sucked you in quite as much. It had a reputation time for being difficult to control. I never found that very much. Um, it wasn't an easy game by any means. 
and I tended to play very cautious. It had that great thing where, of course, if you uh, died without having ejected, it wiped your save, which was evil but brilliant. The graphics at the time were excellent. Apparently it was great fun online with its sequel, uh, Line of Contact, I believe it was called. I never ever played it online. We only ever played it at home in a darkened room with a TV, the bigger TV as you can muster at the time, and a massive controller. And it was like robot jocks. Love it. Uh, difficult to get hold of now for a reasonable price, but if you get the chance, by all means do. Number seven, I chose Oddworld Munch's Odyssey. The previous generation of the PS1. Uh, Abe's Odyssey and Abe's Exodus were absolutely amazing. I remember us poring over pages in computer magazines waiting for the sequel which was promised for the PS2 which was Munch's Odyssey. Now we were promised it but it didn't come. Microsoft waded in with a big wad of cash and scored an exclusive for themselves. Great game, brilliant characters. Munch is a hoot. The FMV scenes are fantastic. Oddworld Inhabitants were really on top of the game back then. This was re-released on the PS3 and the PS Vita in HD. So if you want to check it out, it's easy to do. Oddworld Munch's Odyssey, it's a massive game. It's again dirt cheap. Pick it up. It is my number seven. Number six is another flight game. It's Crimson Skies High Road to Revenge. Another one that plays, I guess, a kind of bit similar to the likes of Star Wars Starfighter and Jaeger. It's got that whole Indiana Jones meets steampunk meets the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen feel to it. It's dashing, it's escapades, and it plays really, really well. What's more, you put it on now and, okay, cutscenes aside, the actual gameplay hasn't aged at all. The graphics still look nice, the story's really good, and the controls just hang together really, really well. If you're watching this and you're already a fan on Xbox, you are well aware of this Xbox exclusive. But Crimson Skies High Road to Revenge is my number six. Okay, halfway there to my number five, which is Panzer Dragoon Auto. Now, if you've played Panzer Dragoon on the Sega Saturn, you'll know it's a fantastic real shooter. Pretty game, easy to pick up. It's kind of a bit of a high score fiend of a game. And then not so many people know about the Xbox exclusive, which was Panzer Dragoon Auto. Now, this was apparently originally intended for the Sega Dreamcast when the Dreamcast went down the pan. So some kind of deal set up with Microsoft and Sega to port a lot of their games over to the Xbox. And one of them was Panzer Dragoon Auto. It is addictive. It's pretty as hell. It looks absolutely fantastic and it's the sort of game you don't see so much anymore. Everyone talks about the original Panzer Dragoon games on the Sega Saturn and nobody ever seems to mention Panzer Dragoon Auto which for me is better than its previous two. Number five for me, Panzer Dragoon Auto. Number four, Armed and Dangerous. Now this is another game I don't hear enough people talking about. It's a basic third person shooter with gadgets and guns and characters and what have you and it's fairly unremarkable. The graphics are decent but nothing spectacular and the same could be said for the sound. However it's the sense of humour that gets here with this game. I have never laughed so much as I did with the cutscenes on Armed and Dangerous. Some fantastic weapons such as the shark gun and the upside down bomb. But some of the parts where the spoof on Empire Strikes Back, if you've played this game you know what I'm talking about, the spoof on Empire Strikes Back still creases me up to this day. 
Add to that the part with the torture scene and everything else. It's got a very Monty Python style to some of the spoofs. On top of it, it's still a half decent game under there as well. But to be honest, I'm not even rating this one on the game. I'm rating this on the side splitting humour. If you haven't played this, make sure you do. Again, it's about a pound. Armed and Dangerous, my number four. Number three on my list is another entry into the Oddworld series and another exclusive at the time for the Xbox. It is Oddworld Stranger's Wrath. And this one was a it was fairly late in the Xbox's life and at the time went almost completely unnoticed. It's since got, got a little bit more of a fan base. It was re-released in HD on the PS3 and the Vita. Uh, it switches between third person and first person shooting. It's got that quirky Oddworld Inhabitant style and it's it's charming, it's what you want to play if you want something. It's a first person shooter without being serious and I can't stand first person shooters that take themselves too serious. You're firing crazy little hungry badgers at people and then capturing them back and then taking them back to a duck for some ransom. That's the kind of thing we're talking about here. It's all done very well, it controls very well, and it's absolutely superb. I'm sure you've all heard of it by now, even if nobody did at the time. Oddworld Stranger's Wrath is my number three. So, to the nitty gritty. Number two in my ten greatest original Xbox games is Outrun 2. Now this was a huge, huge arcade hit at the time. Most arcade fans these days still rate it as one of the best ever. Even surpassing that of the original 80s game. It's just beautiful to look at. It handles like a dream. The drifting is fantastic to play. It's arcade racing at its absolute best. I recently had a big debate with, um, not a mass debate, a big debate with a friend of mine over whether this or Burnout Revenge was the best arcade racer. Um, I claim to this day this is the greatest arcade racer of all time. I still play this on multiple systems. The PS2 version looks great as well but I think the Xbox version was just about the top one you could get until the HD remake on the Xbox 360. This is another one where if you've got um, a UK original Xbox it might be worth having a little look into how you can unlock the higher definition modes just to make it look that bit better but even in standard def it looks fantastic I can't throw enough praise at this game you all know it but it's just the best fastest and most addictive arcade racer ever and one day I will own the arcade game but in the meantime I've got the original Xbox version and it's awesome my number two is Outrun 2. Okay, so if you're stuck with me so far, you probably realise there's one game missing, especially if you're an Xbox original fan. And that game is, I'm sorry, there's no getting away from it, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Arguably the best Star Wars game ever released. For those of you that haven't played it, but are fans of things like Mass Effect, it's basically Mass Effect before we had Mass Effect. It is an action RPG by Bioware, set in the Star Wars galaxies, uh, with its own story which does just fit seamlessly into the canon. Uh, I won't give anything away because I want everyone to go out and play this. It did have a sequel which I didn't think quite hit the same bar. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic is still available at a reasonable price, but it's creeping up. Get it now. Um, I've no idea if this runs on the uh, on the 360 via backwards compatibility. I do. If not, get yourself an original Xbox and play this. It is my number one pick for the original Xbox, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. There is hours worth in here. So that's my top 10. 10 great games which would bless any gamer's collection. 
I did have a lot of fun going through these. I did enjoy going through my Xbox collection. Maybe what I need to do is play some more of the more obscure games. I try to avoid the um, multi-plats when it comes to the original Xbox. So I just need to look more into the exclusives that it had. Maybe it'll change my opinion a bit because back in the early 2000s I held the Xbox as the pinnacle of gaming and yet these days I hold it kind of a third to the PlayStation 2 and the GameCube. Hey, if it means I gotta play some more games, it's gotta be worth a try, yeah. This has been Game Asai. Keep it hard.